Hey, everybody. On this episode of the Messengers podcast, we're doing a Google Analytics overview. Uh, we're trying to keep this as kind of a Google Analytics 101, um, but we, we got a little deep into some stuff. It's definitely a little bit of a longer episode than we typically do, but there's some really good information in there for anybody who's ever uh, been a little overwhelmed by the Google Analytics interface. If you don't have um, any analytics on your website already, there's a, a good intro in here into how to get that done uh, and then what to do with that data once you're there. We know it can be a little overwhelming sometimes, so we're trying to kind of break that down a little bit uh, and provide some really valuable information on how you can use that data to optimize your website and improve your business and your marketing. So stay tuned. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Messengers Podcast. I am Chris Searles. With me today is Rob Seifert. Uh, today, we are going to do a little bit of an overview on Google Analytics. One of the primary issues we see a lot um, from either web design clients or uh, digital marketing clients, or really just even clients that don't come to us for that stuff, but they're kind of you know either using somebody else or not using anybody. Um, is most of the time either either they don't have any kind of an analytics package installed. We're, we're talking about Google Analytics here uh, just because it's kind of the default standard um, uh, and it's free uh, and it's good. So we uh, that's kind of you know kind of what we go with from the beginning. But um, you know either they don't have one installed or they have it installed and they've never looked at it, or uh, they have it installed and they've looked at it and they got so overwhelmed that they never came back. Um, and they really don't pay any attention to any of the data that's there and available to them, uh, primarily because it's it's it can be a bit overwhelming if you've not really done the homework to figure it out and, and learn about it. Uh, and I think especially if you're not very technically inclined um, there's definitely uh, a kind of a, a shock value when you first yeah. log in and see the sheer volume of uh-huh. information and data that's available to you. Yeah, I, I tend to think I'm fairly technically inclined, and I find it a little daunting, uh, a little deep um, in terms of you know the information that you can get out of it. And I guess that's why we're going to talk about it today, just kind of talk about, you know, simplifying it and, and where to start right so yeah where where do you start well i guess installation right that was right um you know installing analytics if you have a web developer or web designer give it to them tell them to get it set up make sure that you are uh the owner or the, at least that you have admin access on the account you want to make sure you have the ability to log in and take a look at what you want to be able to see um, you know, we, that we actually have that issue sometimes where we have clients that come to us and the first question is, okay, well, what's your, you know, can we get an access to your Google analytics account? And it's, well, I don't even know what that is. I, mm. uh, you know, my web designer set it up four years ago when they built my website and now I can't get in touch with them at all. So we're going to just kind of throw all that data away because we can't get access to it. Mm. So, um, make sure right away you know, whatever you're doing, even right now, if you have a website that's active and, and, um, you know, it's up there, make sure that you gain access, admin level access to your Google analytics account, um, so that you, you can maintain it and hang on to it. We talked about, uh, I think it was last, uh, maybe not last week's episode and it's hard to keep up with when we record and when we publish, but, uh, one of the episodes that we just did recently was about, um, how to actually update your website the right way, how to redesign your website the right way. And a lot of what we discussed was using the data that's available to you uh, to do that in a way that doesn't, you know, get rid of a page that was your most trafficked page on your website and people were finding valuable that you didn't even know about. Um, And the way to do that is to make sure that you're using your analytics data. um, And the way to continue to do that is to make sure that you don't lose all that data when you redesign your website or move to to another provider or start working with a new digital marketing company. 
Uh, and doing that by making sure that you have access to that account, you can admin that account, you're not reliant on somebody you might not be able to get in touch with a year from now, six months from now, whatever. Um, so that's kind of number one. Number two on installation really is if you're not working with somebody else, um, you should be able to handle it. I mean, it's a piece of JavaScript code that gets dropped into your website. Uh, if you're using some sort of like a website builder, like a Wix or a Squarespace or something like that, uh, I'm pretty sure they all have really easily uh, accessible options to just drop your um, the, the ID that Google gives you into their software WordPress. Um, I mean, there's SEO plugins and analytics plugins and all that kind of stuff that you know, you just drop your tag in there and it kind of takes care of it for you. So you're saying if, if somebody came to us with, uh, you know, a website that they had built, you know, several years ago and they had the Google Analytics um, installed on it, uh, we could review it and give them a general sense of, you know, traffic on their sites, information like that, just, you know, just based on the Google Analytics that are in there. Yeah, so... We do that, right? That right. is something that we do. And then the idea, um, I guess, then kind of jumping into how to get started once it's installed and you actually have some data to look at. Um, you know, the, the general idea with Google Analytics is you can go as deep as you really want to. Mm -hmm. For most small businesses, um, there are a couple of screens that you can kind of live in and, and look at, you know, on a weekly basis and just get a general feel for how well your website's doing, where your traffic's come from, how uh, how well some of your marketing activities are actually working, um, and not really need to go crazy deep into analytics. You know, the, the, um, the people that really need to kind of deep dive into their analytics are the ones where their website basically is their business. Mm -hmm. um, either it's an e-commerce store and you're really looking at individual pages and optimizing conversion rates on, you know, a single page or, uh, you know, different ads that you're running across how many different ad networks and what traffic's converting at what rate from what sources, um, you know, how many, how well are your click-throughs from one product to another product to related products and things like that, you know, market basket analyses, all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. that most people um, that are listening to this because they're interested in kind of a basic overview of Google Analytics um, don't need to deal with all that stuff because that's not the case for you. You just want to know, hey, we hired somebody, you know, to do some digital advertising for us are we getting any response out of that you know i want to kind of verify the data the information that they're providing to us we just want to make sure you know everything is kind of looks the way that they say that it looks or it's you know we're getting traffic uh you know maybe we did a, a big social media push and we want to make sure that we're actually getting traffic and you know there's something that's resulting from that social media push right. um so generally speaking where's our traffic coming from um Kind of, uh, you know, you're talking about somebody that's doing maybe a Google ad camp, you know, an ads campaign, um, maybe something like we talked about in previous episodes with A and B testing. That that's what you'd look at. Yep. Yeah, and then and then again, depending on what platforms you're doing that on, some of them actually integrate with Google Analytics to pull that data back into the ad platform. So. Um, you know, AdWords in particular, there's a good integration there between the two, as you would kind of hope there would be. Mm -hmm. um, so generally speaking, you can view that data on in AdWords. Uh, you don't even have to get into analytics. You can, okay. uh, but that does require that you have analytics configured and set up properly. Um, the other thing that uh, it's, I guess, one of the first things that I always tell people that you, is is um, it's a one of the few things that you have to configure in Google Analytics, you know, most of the time it's pretty plug and play. You drop a code snippet on your website and you let analytics kind of take care of the rest. Um, one of the things that you do need to set up and configure are um, conversions, uh, which is something that most people, again, that we see are not doing, which is kind of a basic step that everybody should take when it comes to configuring Google Analytics. And conversions basically are 
whatever is of value to you, some some sort of um, user interaction that that you believe results in what you would call a conversion. So, uh, in an e-commerce st- um, setup, that would be somebody actually made a purchase, mm-hmm. right? For uh, most kind of small businesses that aren't really doing a lot of e-commerce, if you're just talking about, you know, I want somebody to call me and request a service or something like that. You can set up your conversions to say, okay, well, when somebody hits this page on my website, that's where they get redirected after filling out the contact form to schedule an appointment. So that's a conversion, mm-hmm. right? They've filled out that contact form. Uh, and the really the reason for setting up your goals, right? And a goal and conversion is basically the same thing in, in, in Google. Um, is then to be able to evaluate how effective your your advertising is, what traffic actually results in the most conversions, um, you know, all that kind of stuff is how you can kind of, but, it, you know, you have to start with here's the goal, here's the objective I want somebody to take. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be if you're, you know, like a local publication, a local news newspaper or something like that, uh, a goal could be I want visitors to view four pages or four articles on my site before they leave Mm -hmm. Uh, because that's what I feel like is a really engaged user that's something I'm going to get value out of and I want to optimize for that goal sure Um, you know it could be the amount of time they actually spend on your website it could be um, viewing products and services that you offer that you you know you want to make sure they get to that page Um, downloading a white paper or you know something like that there's those are all options that you can f- configure and it's really simple to do that uh, but that's a that's kind of a starting point when you first set up Google Analytics or if you have it set up and you've not configured your goals yet go back in configure goals you know somebody reached my contact page somebody filled out my contact form you know those are kind of general ones that we always set up almost across the board so you're you're defining that goal and and really it's a way of determining uh, your target market, the people you're trying to reach the most, um, by who's visiting those places in your site, uh, clicking on those buttons or filling out those forms. Um, I mean, is there a way to identify uh, who those people are that that are? Well, so that's a, that's interesting, right? right? Um, and that's where you start getting into a lot of the privacy regulations that exist now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, GDPR is the big one. That's the European, uh, I think, I forget what the, it's like general privacy and data regulation or or something like that. Right. Um, and then a lot of the, uh, uh, that, that's a European regulation. So if your site actually targets European visitors, you have to be GDPR compliant. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of U.S. states are now actually adopting Mm GDPR-esque policies Mm -hmm. um so it's just kind of a good rule of thumb at this point to kind of look at the gdpr what those regulations are and and be compliant with that the nice thing about using a tool like google analytics is they are compliant with the gdpr Mm -hmm. um so they're kind of taking care of that portion from your standpoint you got to make sure you have a privacy policy on your website that uh, identifies the fact that people are you know, we're using cookies. That's what what analytics uses, and that's mm-hmm. what just about everything uses. I mean, it, you know, there's like all this freak out about cookies, but primarily it's just it's non personally identifiable information. You can there, and I say that as I'm laughing about an email that I just got that was super creepy that um, uh, a company had sent me that. It was a real estate company that, you know, said, oh, you know, you searched for or somebody in your company searched for or looked at this property that we have available and blah, blah, blah. And I'm mm. like, first of all, no, like, don't <laughs> like, right. you know, if somebody didn't tell you, didn't didn't tell you they were interested in something like personal outreach to say, hey, we're tracking you. Like, right. that's just creepy. Don't do it. <laughs> um but uh, kind of getting off topic a little bit, but um, 
generally speaking, so, you know, as far as trying to identify somebody on your website, the, the rule of thumb these days is you don't really do that. You kind of can, but for the most part, we try to do it in a way that's um, not creepy, right? non-intrusive. So, uh, you know, somebody's got a Facebook tracking cookie basically on their page. You pretty much can track them back to their Facebook profile and, you know, you could go through all that. Really, we don't like to do that. That's where we start looking at saying, okay, we can, we want to retarget this person based on the content that they were looking at. So rather than actually identifying, you know, this is Bob Johnson that lives at, you know, right. 12 Oak Street and, Bob, you know, the idea is, well, they this person or this group of people looked at this product on my website or this page on my website or generally speaking, they seem to be interested in this service or whatever that is. Um, and then remarketing to them. So through AdWords, we say, okay, anybody that's visited this page, now I want to show them an ad for that product you know, for 30 days, um, I want to frequency cap that at four times a day, and they're going to see that ad, you know, across. And I'm sure most people that are listening to this now are, or a lot of people that are listening to this now are going, oh, that's how that works. That, you right. know, that one thing that I looked at that one time that I keep seeing ads for. Um, and that's really how we kind of look to identify people from Google standpoint. They then try to aggregate as much of that data together for you as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, But again, in a non-personally identifiable way. So it's more done uh, to let you know over the last 30 days, um, 54% of your visitors were women and, you know, 46% were men. Um, You know, the, your general age groups that you track across are, you know, break down this way. Uh, so they do, you know, as much as they can, and really Google can kind of, if they wanted to, identify exactly who you were, what all of your interests are, and, right. you know, they could do that. Um, but so they that's the way that they use that data is to try to aggregate it together to give you kind of a good uh, general overview and picture of who your customer is, who your visitors are. Um, and then, as you were talking about, then to use that to try to break down who your general, you know, general demographic criteria um, that might influence your ad buying decisions later on mm-hmm. uh, or might influence your the type of creative and the type of content that you produce to try to then say, OK, well, this is who I'm already appealing to. What can I do now to really appeal to that right. user base? Um, one of the big ones is that is a little deeper into the Google, Google Analytics playbook, but um, can be super uh, valuable is they will allow you to try to identify um, buying behavior. So, so based on searches that you run on Google and things like that, they can try to identify somebody that's likely to buy a car in the next six months or mm. um, likely to you know buy a home or refinance a mortgage or, you know, all those kinds of things uh, that they'll take kind of based on a lot of the criteria that they're collecting, the information they're collecting on you, and then again, kind of aggregate that together and put you in a group that will allow somebody to say, yes, I want to advertise to that group of people. Uh, And then they can kind of, they'll show you those ads or, you know, whatever they want to show you. Um, based on your affiliation in that group. And you can access all that information in analytics too. But again, not from a, you know, this person, this individual not person. Individual context, it's generally, generally speaking, your visitors, 42% of them are likely to buy a car in the next six months or something like that. So, Right. Yeah, well, that's really, you know, w- what I was asking is your general market. I mean, I, I get the creepy factor there for sure. <laughs> um, you know, everybody probably understands that. Um, but but then you also see, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they say you can find ways to generate leads also. So, you know, that's a little bit different. That's kind of more of what we were talking about. I think you touched on it a little bit when you were talking about um, – you know, uh, targeting people that have clicked on certain pages within your site. Um, I mean, would that be considered a lead as far as they're concerned, how they define it, Google? 
um, be more specific when you say that you can generate a lead that way? There's just, um, I, I just briefly looked through a t- tutorial on, on you know, uh, Google Analytics. Yeah, and, and, and for anybody listening, you know, Rob, typically, Rob's our creative director here, so um, usually most of this stuff kind of falls on me to kind of drive the, the technical aspect of this. So it's always, it's one of the things we like about the, the podcast and the way that we can kind of talk is, um, you know, the next episode that we're recording that's going to be published uh, is kind of 100% in Rob's realm. So um, a lot of questions that I have for for him on the same basis. But um, so we kind of like the idea of being able to to approach it with the same level of questions and, and, uh, you know, information gathering that we hope everybody out there is kind of asking the same things of, you know, to themselves. Yeah. But I'm learning a bit here. <laughs> but really to be more specific, I you know, it's just you know, a lead, like a you know, the most qualified lead you can get without being creepy, I guess is what I'm asking. Uh if uh somebody goes to your website and they fill up, uh go to a page to fill out a form, but yet they don't fill out the form, um anyone that does that, it, are they included in a group? that you can reach out to? Yeah, so um, I kind of touched on remarketing right. before. Uh, remarketing is a, is a pretty powerful tool that a lot of people don't take advantage of, and you can do that beyond just Google. Um, we do – Facebook – offers the ability to remarket and, and um, you know, obviously Insta, Facebook allows it, Instagram allows it. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, so the idea is if you have Google's tracking code on your website, if you have Facebook's tracking code on your website, they can track back to who that person is. That's right. So they'll drop a cookie on that person's um, in their browser to say this person went on this website or this page of this website or whatever uh and then the next time you go on facebook or you do google search or you go on a website that uses google's um adsense platform to display google display ads on their own website all that kind of stuff all that that information is communicated back to google to say okay now we have an advertiser that wants that wants to reach out to people that have already been on their website uh, and we've identified you as, as somebody that went on this person's website or on this website, um, and they want to show you ads. So yes, you can retarget and remarket to mm-hmm. uh, all of those people. And again, it's it it can be pretty powerful. Um, it's one of those things where there definitely is that kind of creepiness factor if you're really not careful about how you do it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we always, you know, I always like to make sure you're doing things like frequency capping and uh, making sure that if you've somebody kind of tripped over your website um, from both standpoints, one from from their standpoint, they don't want to keep seeing ads from you for the next 30 days on every single website that they go to. Mm-hmm. They just don't want to see it because they happen to click on a link somewhere by accident or something like that. And from your standpoint, you don't want to pay for that. Right. You know, for somebody that is has no interest in working with you and doing business with you and going back to your website. The other side of it is um, if it's something that you're offering that is of interest to people, uh, it's a great way to stay top of mind um, to make sure that they're seeing, you know, it's somebody then that knows who you are, has been on your website, yeah. uh, and you can, you know, get a lot of frequency and a lot of repetition um, from a brand, you know, a branding standpoint and a marketing standpoint by using retargeting and remarketing. Yeah, I think that's an important point. I mean, I see it all the time myself. I mean, I, you know, years ago when my daughter was in dance, I uh, ordered a pair of uh, dance tights for her online. <laughs> she hasn't been in dance in four years. And, and I'm now still, people keep trying to sell you tutus? I'm still getting, uh, you know, pop-up ads for... Uh, you know, girls' tights. I mean, it's just a little weird. <laughs> it's a little creepy when you have a client looking over your shoulder. Right, right. <laughs> We've identified you as somebody who's very interested in... <laughs> I'm somehow... I'm, that's how I've been identified. Yeah. Um, and then I think from there, you know, so we've kind of gone a little deep into some of this stuff, I think, uh, to kind of go back to where we started, which is just kind of somebody that is 
first looking at Google Analytics and doesn't want to be overwhelmed and is is kind of just looking for a five minute, 10 minute, what can I look at to make it valuable for me once a week? Um, for one is you can automate emails out of analytics. So you can run, you can look at reports and look at kind of snapshots um, and then say, okay, I want you to email this to me once a week, which is nice. It's easy. You don't have to go back into the mm. program every time. Um, and so kind of once you've identified something that you find val- value in, then schedule it as an email, uh, have it delivered to you as a PDF once a week. And there you go. You don't have to keep going crazy trying to find that same report again or you know run the same filters and all that kind of stuff um for the most part i love uh the acquisition tab on analytics which gives you an idea of where people are coming from when they come to your website Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you want to know how well your social media campaigns are working um how well your paid advertising is working um, if you're getting referral traffic, which is kind of a nice thing to know that, hey, somebody linked to our website, um, it's always good to know, well, who did that and where are those people coming from? You know, maybe you can reach out and say thank you to somebody for linking to your content because they found value in it. Um, otherwise, it, you can use that as an opportunity to try to generate more of those refer- referral links and backlinks. Um, you know, if you found somebody that linked to it, for some particular reason, you know, they liked something about what you're covering. You can look for similar websites and other places that might also be willing to link into your website. And if it generates a good amount of traffic for you and it's traffic that's valuable to you, it could be worth your time to do that. Um, the the overview on the, the uh, acquisition tab mm-hmm. is pretty good. Gives you kind of just a general overview of social traffic. Um, direct traffic, which is people who just kind of typed in your your domain name in their browser and went straight to your site, um, uh, and just kind of a breakdown overall of how that traffic kind of breaks out. Uh, and then you can drive into each one individually. So you can go into your social traffic and figure out which social media channels are they coming from. Is Facebook a big driver? Is Instagram? Is it, you know, um, and really kind of try to get a better feel for how those campaigns are working for you. What what you're putting out there and what stuff that you're putting out there is actually working. Um, The behavior tab is what are people doing when they get on my website? What pages are they looking at? Um, There's a lot of kind of general uh, terminology there that's important to understand. Um, If you look at and I'm trying to bring up a report now so I can just look at it, um, what you would see. But if you look at the behavior tab, you're going to see right away, um, uh, first of all, all all of your content in analytics is time-oriented. So in the top right corner, there's the, your date range. And I think by default, it'll... Um, uh, I think it'll always go back to whatever your, your previous date range was, but... Um, You can do, you know, the last 30 days, last month, this month, uh, you know, the last seven days, last week, all that kind of stuff. You can kind of define what what level of data you want to look at. Um, The other nice thing is you can actually compare that to a previous date range. So if you want to say, uh, you know, at the end of the month, I like to run month-end reports and compare it to the same month in the previous year. Uh, which tends to work well for people who have seasonal businesses and things like that where you don't want to compare, you know, if you, if your business is the busiest that you are in the summer, you don't want to compare, uh, you know, July data to January data. You want to make sure you compare July of this year to July of last year. Mm-hmm. Um, where for other people, if you're running like an online publication or things like that, you can compare this month to last month just about all the time because you don't really want to have any seasonality in that business Mm -hmm. um but so defining your time range is kind of step one and then once you've done that uh and the the uh, i guess across the board we can kind of define some terms that are important just to to understand the world of um web statistics and web traffic Mm -hmm. um i had somebody recently who talked about hits on their website um oh i I remember what it was. It was um, uh, somebody who's selling advertising on their website, and 
part of their sales pitch is how many hits they get in a in a month or a year or whatever and uh, hits is a very very old antiquated term in terms of tracking uh, website traffic and really what a hit is is a request to your server and depending on how many resources you have on a page and how frequently they're loaded just to load one page you can have 20 hits on your server to load a single page so a hit means nothing if you see that somewhere um, it's either somebody that doesn't really know what they're talking about or they're trying to get away with something Uh Um, generally speaking these days we talk about page views right because a page view is what we care about a page view is somebody actually loaded and looked at a a page on your website Um, and then there's the difference between page views and unique page views so uh, a unique uh, again kind of generally in terms of digital advertising uh, if you see somebody that's talking about the amount of monthly we usually they're usually defined in terms of monthly visitors monthly page views monthly unique page views Um, and you'll see page views and unique page views as two different numbers and uniques are always less than total page views Uh, uniques are over that period of time say over 30 days over a month um, how many individual people looked at a page on your website um And then your page view number is, out of all of those people, how many pages did they look at? So uh, if you see 20,000 unique page views um, and 30,000 page views, that means on average 20,000 people looked at one and a half pages on your website. Um, The average time spent on a page is one of the first things that you get in Google Analytics, which is on average how long did somebody actually... uh, stay on your website Mm -hmm. um obviously you know depending on what you're offering that can actually be a good thing and a bad thing a a longer time on page if you have um uh you know for the most part you want it to be a little longer you want people to be engaged you don't want it to be 10 seconds and then people are leaving uh but at the same time if your goal is to get somebody to take an action to fill out a form to do something spending 10 minutes on your website might not be a good thing they might not be able to find what they're looking for and you might need to then start working on how can we actually drive them to that action a little faster than what the how long it's taking them to get Mm -hmm. there right now um so it's it's good to pay attention to that uh again in general longer is better um but you got to kind of take your own situation into account um bounce rate is another big one that I I think a lot of people don't really understand intuitively. And bounce rate is basically somebody came on my website, uh, looked at the one thing, the page that they landed on, and then left. Um, So obviously, again, generally speaking, a high bounce rate is not good. Um, You know, the higher your bounce rate, the more people are are coming onto your website. Uh, Typically means they're not finding what they're looking for and they're leaving and going somewhere else to find it. So, so optimizing for your bounce rate, trying to reduce your bounce rate is is generally a good idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, you can get into exit statistics, which can be important to take a look at. One of the things that we like to look at, uh, rather than kind of a generic exit stat, is um, the percentage of exits per page on a, on a page basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, And the idea with, you know, an exit is this is the page, the last page somebody looked at before they left your website. Uh, And the idea with an exit is you want that exit page to be a a goal completion page. Um, That means that somebody came to your website, they did what you wanted them to do, and then they left, which is the way that transaction should occur. So if you have an e-commerce site, somebody came to my website, they added some stuff to their cart, they checked out, they got to a thank you, receipt, confirmation, whatever page, and then they left. Uh, Generally speaking, that's the way that you want that transaction to occur. That's a good exit page is, you know, your receipt page or your order confirmation page. Your home page being really high in exits means that there's probably a problem with your home page, that people aren't finding uh, what they're looking for, they're coming to your website and they probably shouldn't have in the first place maybe your advertising doesn't target the right people 
uh, and you're you're leading them to your homepage, which then doesn't convert well for the ads that you're running, whatever the reason is, those are the pages that you don't really want a lot of exits, your product pages. You know, when somebody's just looking at a product or a service that you offer, you don't want them to leave that page without then clicking to contact you or to buy from you or to do something. So we look at exits and where people are leaving from uh, as a really good kind of indicator of how well a page is performing or your website in general is performing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a lot of the stuff that you can find in, in the behavior tab. Um, you know, you can get into content, you know, what pages are actually generating the most traffic and what are people looking at on a regular basis. Uh, if you have a blog or something like that, you can get a good idea from that, from your site content um, view of what content's actually resonating with people and, and get a, a good idea for future topics that you should cover and um, topics that you should maybe go in depth on a little more. Um, you know, so, but that's really kind of a general overview of the behavior tab. Um, the conversions tab we talked about before, that's goals. How are people converting? Um, You can see analytics is getting a lot better with being able to show, uh, they show flow charts. So you can actually look at uh, the way that people are kind of navigating your site. You know, in in general terms, we have uh, over the last week, we've had a thousand people that started on this page. And then out of those thousand people, 600 of them clicked through to this page. Uh, and you know, 200 of them fell off and left, and 200 of them went through to this other page, and then from there, that traffic flowed this way, and um, you know, you can kind of get a, a good feel for how people are using your website, and and take a look at that, and try to optimize for, uh, again, for the convert for the actions you want people to take, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's kind of a, a good general take on this whole episode is making sure that you're defining those first what do you want people to do when they come to your website define those goals and those conversions uh, and then use the data that's available to you to optimize for those conversions and those goals all right it's a lot to absorb even though it's 101 i know i just kind of talked a lot but um, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's but it's it's but it's important valuable. yeah no definitely. you know and that's and that's i think the most important thing and and what what probably trips most people up is they get to that homepage right away, and then they just don't know what to do. Sure. There, there's kind of this idea of, uh, well, there's just so much here, and I'm not even sure. Even once I look at it and see it, then what what do I do about it? Uh-huh. You know, there's, okay, so people are looking at that page. Okay, now what do I do? And a yeah. lot of people don't really understand, you know, the, the real science that goes into, and that you can, you know, it's not a difficult thing to say, okay, everybody's leaving from this page on my website, asking yourself, you know, objectively as, as a user that you're targeting, why would I come to this page and not perform the action that you want me to perform? Uh, And most of the time it's because you're not giving them a really easy way to perform that action Mm -hmm. because you've not taken the time to identify what that action is in the first place and then may you know build an easy path to that action. So mm-hmm. identifying that for yourself and saying this is what I want somebody to do when they come on this page. Now how can I make it as easy as possible for them to do that? Right. Really then kind of opens the door to now this data has value to me because there's something there's some objective, there's some goal that I'm aware of that now I can try to optimize for and I can make sure it's as easy as possible for you to achieve that goal and that objective. Sure, it's logical. Hey, what's up YouTube? Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Click the links for more from The Messengers and visit us at messengers.blog for links to our social and more exclusive content from The Messengers. Thanks.